It is October 31st, 1943. Above, friendly planes, scouting, defending, protecting. Below, friendly submarines, sounding, listening, accompanying. Around us, friendly men of war, darting, deploying, ready. And if this enemy pilot spots our convoy, he will be chased, but not destroyed, until he had radioed our location, the information that we are following a northwesterly course. At 1600, we will steer toward the Shortland Islands, and the Japanese will assume that our landing will be made on Choiselle, or the southern tip of Bougainville. He will be wrong. Under the cover of the friendly darkness, we will change our course and move swiftly through the moonless night to our real objective, Empress Augusta Bay. Here is your host, General Holland M. Smith former commanding general, Fleet Marine Force, Pacific Area, United States Marine Corps. General Smith, did the Bougainville landing achieve the desired element of surprise? Insofar as its location, yes. Thanks to its masterful planning, clever deception, and flawless execution. It caught the enemy with his plans at half-mast, and before he could diagnose our real objective, we had time to dig in, expand our perimeter, and get our supplies ashore and dispersed. To keep a chicken from flying, you clip his wings. So several days before the invasion, Marine, Army, and Navy planes poured tons of bombs onto every enemy airfield within striking distance of our supplies objective, Empress Augusta Bay. busy defending themselves that they were unable to mount a disruptive attack until later. The day is clear. At 6.14 a.m., the minesweepers go in, clearing lanes 6,000 yards ahead of the transports. They report all clear of mines and sufficient water. Upon reaching a point 3,000 yards off Cape Torakina, each transport executes a 100 degree turn to port and takes the point under three inch gunfire. later, the barrage is lifted. The order to land the landing force is given at 0645, and 7,500 Marines take their places in the LCVPs and LCMs, ready for the 1,500-yard run to the beach. The destroyers Anthony, Terry, Wadsworth, and Sigourney commence their prearranged fires. this fire ceases, and 31 TBFs of Marine Air Group 14, based at Munda, bomb and straight until 
As the boats of the third Marines come in line with Pura Atta Island, they are taken under three-way machine gun fire from the Cape, the western tip of Pura Atta Island, and Torakina Island. Raider Battalion, less Company L, lands on Pura Atta Island and starts mopping up the anti-boat defenses. The enemy keeps them under pressure. One by one, the machine guns are silent. snipers. It is a two-day job. Meanwhile, as the boats of the 1st Battalion, 3rd Marines, continue past Pura Atta Island, they are again under machine gun and rifle fire from Cape Torokina. As they near the shore, another voice is heard. Fire is deadly. 50 high explosive shells score a batting average of 280. 14 boats are hit. Four destroyed. Among them, that of the group commander. And the assault waves become disorganized. Companies of the 1st Battalion are landed in practically reverse order. These could have been the seeds of disaster. By this time, entire organizations were broken up. Platoons and companies were thrown out of position by being landed on the wrong part of the beach. Contact was lost between companies. The battalion lost its communications and therefore control of its subordinate units. In time of crisis, will I lift up a man? And a man is lifted up, then two, and then a score. Individuals thoroughly trained as small unit leaders. Individuals who know the mission. Individuals who are ready and willing to take charge in a crisis. And because every Marine has been thoroughly indoctrinated and briefed on the plan, purpose, and overall strategy of the maneuver, each is able to carry out the mission of the sector in which he finds himself. And as this unity of individuals encompasses neighbor, spontaneity of effort replaces chaos. Confusion gives way to achievement. The battle gains momentum, gathers objectivity, and proceeds without any further direction from higher echelon. The Marines had been landed in the wrong place. The situation was not well in hand. Coconut logs and sand. Banzai and a box score of 280. Other boats are on their way. Another dozen to be sacrificed on the altar of enemy marksmanship. Unless something is done and done quickly. There is no artillery ashore. There is no time to call for naval gunfire. One unit of A Company, 3rd Marines, lands near the deadly gun. Their objective is to their left, but the 75 is on their right. There is no hesitation. Up the draw past the flanking riflemen, a sergeant and four Marines. Then two. Forget the book. Snap the pin, hold and take the count. Toss one. Nothing. Again. It is not enough. Pride. History. 
tradition, esprit de corps, and a new page is written in Marine Corps history. I've always marveled at the devotion one Marine has for his fellow Marine. The honor of their passing is written in the hearts and memories of those who love them. Those who were privileged to fight beside them are a grateful nation. A sergeant and four men become none, but the lethal voice of the 75 is still. Our intent is known. Our strategy fathomed. Our enemy gathers his fleet. If he can sink or destroy our smaller force, the Marines will be severed from supply, reinforcement. As night falls, we are silent, thoughtful, on the back of the outgunned American Navy rides Marine victory or defeat on Bougainville. The darkness becomes taut, then oppressive, then shatters. It is 27 minutes past midnight on the morning of November 2nd. Rear Admiral Amori has begun his battle for annihilation. Another man, imprisoned within his immediate confines and restrained from the conflict, distilled from anxiety the words which are now so meaningful. Then, as the dark hulls climb the horizon and slide down on our side of the ocean, our flag is still there. Admiral Merrill had been superior to the challenge. When enemy flares revealed his position, he laid down a smoke screen to distort and confuse. And the enemy gunners, who had only optical control, were able to damage only three of our ships. Our radar control fire found the enemy wherever he tried to hide. The Japanese lost two by sinking, had three damaged, and hastily withdrew. Every Marine on Bougainville mighty proud of the Navy that night. Bougainville has two seasons, wet and wetter. The average fall is nine and a half inches per month, seven of which sometimes fall in 24 hours. This is our introduction to the rain forest, and it rains every day for 17 days. As the perimeter is extended, the only vehicle which can transport supplies and bring out the wounded is the amphibian tractor. We wade in mud, fight in mud, fall in mud, and sleep in mud, but the battle goes on. November 7th, 
the first Japanese reinforcements arrive, land, dig in, and have to be dug out. The captain commanding B Company speaks Japanese. He moves along in an exposed position. Banzai shouts, then the dutiful enemy charges into the withering fire of his machine gun. loses a leg by his bravery, but he builds up a firing line and prevents infiltration by the Japanese. fighting, we reach positions for an all-out effort. Five batteries of artillery, mortars, anti-tank weapons, and machine guns are brought to bear upon their positions. of Koromokina Lagoon has been won. Marine air units help in the mopping up operation. We have come to seize, enlarge, secure, and anchor a perimeter wherein airstrips may be built. The work begins on November 9. Roads are hastily constructed so there will be no constriction of supply. Communications are expanded. Supplies dispersed to avoid bomb damage. Installations are constructed. Fighting continues. Overland reinforcement must come via the Piva, East-West, or Numa Numa trails. We move quickly toward their junction. In the rainforest, you can step on the enemy before you see him. Their roadblock on the Piva trail takes three days to overcome. Battle of the Coconut Grove. On the 14th, it is secured, and we own the junction of the trails. Beginning with the Battle of the Piva Forks on the 19th of November, it was all uphill fighting for the Marines. Civic Ridge. Hill 1000, held the Popping Ridge, Hill 600, Hill 600A. It is difficult to maneuver men and supplies through an almost impenetrable jungle. Units as large as companies can become separated and out of contact. But by November the 23rd, in spite of attacks, counterattacks, the jungle, rain, mud, and fever, the 3rd Marines had maneuvered into position for attack. From the height of Civic Ridge, 
they located 1,100 men of the Japanese 23rd Regiment concentrated in an area 800 yards square. The Marines and elements of the 37th Infantry Division U.S. Army had moved seven battalions of artillery, 44 machine guns, 12 81 millimeter mortars, and nine 60 millimeter mortars into place and registered them on all probable enemy positions. fired 5,760 rounds into the area. When the barrage and the assault were finished, the Imperial Japanese 23rd Regiment was no more. We had come to seize, enlarge, secure, and anchor a perimeter wherein airstrips could be built. During November, we had 90 alerts, 22 bombings, and fought four major engagements. At dawn of December 10, Marine Air Group VMF-216 lands to make its permanent base. Seven days later, four Army P-39s will do the same. By December 15, most of the fireworks are over for the Marines. Elements of the Army's 37th and Americal Division have been arriving and fighting beside us since November 9. Ten days before Christmas, 1943, command of the Torakina area passes from Major General Roy S. Geiger, 1st Marine Amphibious Corps, to Major General Oscar W. Griswold, United States Army. As rapidly as practical, Marine units are relieved. In 45 days, the Marines had achieved that portion of the victory at Bougainville. But they were leaving no better road. The biggest battles on Bougainville were fought by the United States Army in the early spring of 1944. Their valor and efficiency are recorded in the decisive manner in which they won. We were all on the same team, and teamwork won the Battle of Bougainville.